Hello everybody, welcome back to some more IL-2. Today I'm going to be flying this beautiful FYU Corsair and we have a big task ahead of us because we are up against the formidable G4M Betty Bomber. Now bearing in mind these are of course Japanese bombers that we're fighting against, they are considerably let's say lighter than the European equivalent when it comes to armor and protection for the dudes inside the plane. Naturally, a good fighter pilot will approach a squadron like this from underneath, given that there are no guns underneath the Bettys, that is where they are most vulnerable. But on this particular attempt, I decided to go a bit gung-ho and test my luck at approaching from the rear, still lower than their main altitude, and we do take out this first Betty quite comfortably, uh, which leaves the three kind of in disarray. Uh, but I am actually taking a few chunks of hits uh, which is not good given that it will affect my engine's performance and once again engine management is really not in play here. I mean the Corsair is pretty good at going full throttle for a considerable amount of time and as you can see here I do still need to catch up to the rest of the enemies here. Now again keeping a fairly low altitude but still flying higher than I really should be when going on an attack run I approach the second Betty and this is where I take an absolute pummeling to the face. You'll notice in time that my plane slowly uh, is engulfed by flames, but not before the most bizarre turn of events, as two Bettys crash into each other, and <laughs> there's pieces everywhere. Meanwhile, my plane is slowly about to become set on fire. Thankfully, um, <laughs> my pilot makes it out of there in one piece, be it with some burns to the face probably but parachutes out alive. So sadly, taking down one, I guess, of the four, the two crashing into each other doesn't really count, and we'll see here with a different angle. I was getting a few hits on that Betty, but then his teammate just does the job for me. They collide, pieces everywhere, and there's no chance of me catching up with the last Betty, given that my engine is out, I'm flaming out, we're out of here, on to attempt number two. And once again, I'm going to be keeping fairly low, and you'll notice that my general attitude towards this squadron of Bettys this time around is a lot more cautious. I don't want to be taking massive rounds to the face, so we're going to be attacking from the side. In fact, we're going to progress a wee bit forward here, because not much really happened in that time. It was just a lot of chasing, trying to get back to them, as I spent a bit of time trying to get into the right position. But on this occasion is probably a good example of picking your target. Trying to pick your target early, get that line of sight in. But here you can see I'm a bit indecisive, got bullets flying at me. Uh, but eventually pick the outside guy who uh, is going to take some hits to his engine, which will actually prove fatal in the long run, as you'll see later. Uh, and then we pick another one just as we swing through. You'll notice that the formation is a lot more stretched, which actually makes it easier for us to pick our targets. Thankfully, not hitting the tail of the Betty there, and just curious as to whether he is going down, but the confirmation of that is absolute. You'll notice as well that none of the uh, personnel are jumping out here, because they're actually trying to ditch the plane, but you'll see the good example of why this plane was referred to as a cigar by Japanese bomber pilots. Just look at the fuselage. Just <laughs> shout out to that guy that jumped out as well, just gets absolutely squished on the way through. So this was the plane that I hit on the way through, this is just a quick replay, as you'll notice that the damage that I dealt to that first bomber actually proved to be enough. As you'll see, I go on to continue to slam all those bullets into the other Betty, he goes down, that was the plane that we just looked at, but this guy is on a collision course, because I guess I did enough to the engine, again no one's bailing out, but the pilot feels he is strong enough to keep it above the tree line, but sadly for him, that is not going to be the case as they slam into the tree. So two kills there, but sadly for me, my plane is in no state to make it to the other two Betty. So attempt two has failed as well. I am leaking fuel everywhere. My engine isn't so healthy. So I decide once again to try and land because as with everything in this game, it is an absolute challenge, but an addictive challenge. Just spending time trying to land either on land or on a carrier or on a moving carrier, like the different ways that you can practice landing is is just a, so addictive. I don't know what it is, but again, I do the usual strategy, turn the engine off, float it in, and we initially land quite nicely, but the bounce 
pulls me off balance and my gears are done for. So sad. But attempt number three is where we bring some rockets. I'm not really going to be using them rockets. I'm going to fire them off just to see the trajectory of them, get used to them, and maybe I'll use them more in a future video. But for now, I want to take down these Bettys with my machine guns. We've got those six 50 cal machine guns and they are going to do some damage here as we approach from several different angles, doing a few bits of strafing, trying to get those bullets across and into all Bettys within this squadron as we take the first one down. Nice, neat and clean. Just see the quick replay here. We catch the right side wing and that makes them done for as they spin out of control. I love watching the replays in this game. There's just something so satisfying about seeing the damage that you do as realistically as it can be with these graphical settings, which are still pretty impressive for the year 2024. Anyway, starting on the plane number three, we get a few hits in and the crew immediately starts to bail, which is fine because that's another kill for me. It didn't really feel like it given that the Betty itself was still in decent shape, but it does begin to flame out and that is it for that plane. But this was a bit confusing for me, right? Because I shot down this plane, but then as I turn around to face the other two planes that should be remaining, there is only one signature left. And if we go back, way back, to when the entire Betty Squadron was still in the air, so all four planes are currently here, I was doing my usual strafing runs, and of course I was focusing on the other plane, but this plane here takes a couple of shots, and then the crew just immediately bail. I don't know if maybe I hit the pilot, or I hit something important, but they called it a day, the pilot doesn't make it out alive, and that was actually my first kill, and I didn't even realize it at the time. It's just insane. This is why you gotta be counting your planes, keeping an eye on how many numbers are left, because I was left well and truly confused, but it is three kills to me, and we come down to the final 1v1 as the Betty Bomber draws closer. Our guns are just erupting from their cannons, and as close as we can be, the plane is disintegrated, and that is four kills on the board for this little Corsair rookie pilot. Another angle here, the plane waving goodbye as it falls to the ground, and you got to feel for the pilot who, yet again, doesn't make it out alive. The rest of the crew parachuting out, but sayonara to the pilot of that Betty. And that is going to wrap things up for this little number. Hope you guys enjoyed. Got plenty more IL-2 content to come in future. If you enjoy this video and want to see more of it, please let me know in the comments and leave a like if you did. It really does help me out because, uh, yeah, I just want to keep flying. Flying, shooting, doing things, having fun. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you later for some more IL-2.